Why would one choose to spend their professional days in the dark, guided only by sunset and sunrise? Maybe it's discovering a connection with the planet not possible on land. Why would one choose to leave safe harbor at an age many are tying up their well-earned accomplishments? That's where life is uh, wonderful in a way. It's just, you, it brings you opportunities and if you are flexible enough to follow the path it's offering you, you, it leads you to places you would never have dreamed of. And why risk a measure of safety to explore moments where the only thing certain is change? Your platform is moving around. Half your people are sick, seasickness. You know, you're faced with the weather changing all the time, and you know, there's just a lot of challenges. The benefit of going to sea as opposed to the lab is you're actually working with the kinds of organisms that dominate natural ecosystems. In the lab, we tend to be working with things that we can grow. You can see that the mixed layer, according to this, is maybe it is the science. In November of 2019, the NAMES team presented its findings to NASA. Measured by the volume of data collected, it's the most successful ocean study funded by the organization. By combining several fields of study, by traveling to remote parts of the North Atlantic in four different seasons, there were discoveries that led to more questions and some surprises. One of the beautiful things about doing this kind of work is uh, you never know what you're going to run into, right? Something's going to pop up and you're not expecting it and you try to take advantage of it. On a quiet morning, a coffee on a chilly deck reveals something yeah. remarkable. We don't see any steam. And that's because the air here is really, really clean. Computer data confirms the group stumbles on the cleanest air they have ever recorded on Earth. Secrets of the sea a bit closer to being revealed by the named scientists. A better understanding of the phytoplankton bloom and how it impacts our every breath. On the time scale of climate change, it's a short period, right? So we're not going to go out in four years and say that, you know, climate change is having this impact. What we're trying to understand is how do the factors influenced by climate drive the biology of the ocean? And if you can do that, then you can say something with confidence about predicting how things will change as climate does evolve. But there's something else. The ocean is a calling. Probably the most beautiful place I've ever been is in the middle of the ocean. More than just numbers, more than backbreaking work. When one leaves the dock, there is a realization that there will be moments of self-discovery. It's a calming experience. It's a grounding experience. I think one of the things that's always an inevitable consequence of going to sea is that when you come back home, it's overwhelming. And you realize that I've actually been someplace special. That there's an awful lot that's, that we're dealing with on a daily basis, that if we could get rid of it, we would find another part of us that's important to pay attention to. Nicole tells us the success of research missions can be measured by the publication of scientific papers. By that measure, the NAMES project was one of the most successful research missions of its kind to date. To learn more about the RV Atlantis or the science behind this mission, there are links on our website. And that is Chronicle for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Shana Seymour. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Good night.